I received an email from a friend this week, actually just uh, yesterday I believe it was, maybe came this morning. This morning, 5.51 a.m. He was up early. There's a picture in this email. Um, just has a, a little handwritten note, maybe from a seven or eight year old, has a big stick person and a little stick person and they're holding hands and it just says, I love you, Dad. And um, in this email, it starts out with a, a position description, is really the essence of the email. It's an advertisement. And it says in bold letters, position, father, also known as daddy, dad, pop. Job description, long-term team players needed for challenging permanent work in an often chaotic environment. Candidate must possess excellent communication and organizational skills and be willing to work variable hours, which will include evenings and weekends and frequent 24-hour shifts on call. Some overnight travel required. Length of job, the rest of your life. Possibility for advancement and promotion not much until grandparent position opens up. <laughs> Previous experience, none required, on the job training mandatory. Skills, well, and these are only a few of the many, I'm sure. Ability to fix any broken toy, bug catcher, doctor, chef, chauffeur, teacher, principal, finder of lost objects, master pancake maker, clown. I'm sure we could add to that list. Benefits, no paid holidays. Available benefits include lifelong opportunities for personal growth, unconditional love, and occasional hugs. So these are only a few reasons to celebrate the men we know and love who are great fathers. Happy Father's Day. Thought that might be an encouragement uh, to share that with all of you here this morning. The title that I've chosen for this message and the theme that no doubt you've, well, hopefully you've noticed in, in the scriptures that we've shared is... Uh, is a theme of strength. I've called it specifically the strength of a father. And I want us to think whether we've had a good experience with our earthly fathers or not so good experience. I think all of us can still think of either what we had or what we would have liked to have had as we consider the question, uh, how is strength best, best measured in a man? What, what is it we really look to when we would look to, to strength in a father? What's most important? How much they can lift physically? Well, that's one measure of strength. And that may be a source of great pride to a young child. My daddy's stronger than your daddy. <laughs> and I don't mean to diminish that at all. And what that can do in providing is a sense of security. But that's not enough, is it? We can measure strength in terms of what he can withstand. We measure strength sometimes in what a person can tear down. We might measure strength in what a person can produce. What they can earn is being some form of strength. Sometimes, unfortunately, strength is measured in what a person can take from someone else. I want to suggest that strength shows up in a lot of different forms. And even when we think of the strength of, of a father that a father can give to his family, it may, not, it may not be in all the ways that the world would say, well, that's a measure of strength. I want to suggest that sometimes strength shows up best 
in the middle of the night taking a turn to walk the baby. I want to suggest that sometimes strength is expressed best in washing the dishes after dinner. As you know, there's never in the recorded history of mankind been record of a man shot while doing dishes. <laughs> so I hear. Or better yet, maybe taking his turn cooking, unless he's a really lousy cook, and then maybe you serve your family best by just doing the dishes. But you understand that, that strength is not, is not ultimately measured in what you can take or even just what you, what you can move, but, but strength is, is measured in what you can give. It's having the strength to say, I will give of myself, I will give of my time, I will give of my pride, I will give of my sacrifice, my plans, uh, my interest, all of that's, that's a greater sign of strength than, than someone who says, I know how to get what I want. An incredible difference, an incredible gulf between the two. My dad is 90 years old. He's not as strong as he used to be. Now, he was actually a bit athletic as a younger person. I can even remember some of that um, during my childhood uh, when he'd have opportunity, not real often, to get involved in a game of softball or something along those lines. Uh, uh, what he really enjoyed was ping pong. I remember a couple times when he introduced the game of tennis to us that a few of us have held on to. But, but in all of that, Dad was never a a really physically strong person. He was always a little slight of build. But strength shows in different ways. And I've mentioned before over the years the example and the strength of finding him on his knees in a dark living room. when no one else is around, not there for show. And you might say, well, no, no isn't, isn't that a sign of weakness? Well, some would say so. Think of the Apostle Paul who had a different perspective on weakness. He had a particular weakness. We read about it in 2 Corinthians 12, and he he prayed at least three times that God would take this away from him. And, and God said, no. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. In fact, my strength, God speaking, is perfected in weakness. And Paul said, I've learned. I've learned that when I am weak, then I'm at my strongest. And we... we Think about that and understand that he's talking about a humility that knows how to depend upon God and knows how to find his strength in God and knows how to rest in God. What an expression of strength that kind of life is. I want to suggest that strength to give to others ultimately comes from, from knowing who I am, where I've come from, and why I am here. I think in some measure that's, that's what we want to learn from our fathers. That's, that's the best thing we could be equipped with as we enter into adulthood ourselves. It's to know who we are, where we've come from, and why we are here. And I want to suggest that the greatest the greatest source of strength we can give to our children, the greatest example we can live and, and leave for our children is the strength and confidence that comes from knowing that I am created by an all-powerful God who wants me to know how deep his father love is for me and who wants me to find my own unique way to show that love to the world around me. That's the message of, of who I am. 
I'm a child of God who loves me more dearly than I can ever imagine. That's where I came from. He created me with purpose. And that purpose is to be a channel of his love to the world around me. And when we know those things, it's a source of strength to live in this world not as a taker, but as a giver. Ephesians chapter 6. Susan read the passage about the armor of God, the passage that starts with, Be strong in the Lord. You helped us read from another part of the same chapter. Do you realize they're in the same chapter? The beginning of Ephesians chapter 6, what does it talk about? Well, the first verse, it's in your bulletin. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment that has a promise attached to it. And Paul quotes from, from Exodus that it may go well with you and that you may live long on the earth. Then he goes on to say, and fathers, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. Do not exas exasperate your children by the way you treat them. Well, what? wait, aren't we called to be strong as men? That means making my children do what they're supposed to do, right? Do not provoke your children to anger. Now there's a balance here. There's need for firmness at times, but, but not out of anger. Discipline out of anger is always wrong. If we are, if we are striking out, whether it's, whether it's with a with a spanking, a beating, whatever you name we want to give it, and there's differences of opinion on that, and that's not my primary focus, or whether it's with words, whether it's with consequences, whatever, done in anger is, is not God's, God, God's intention for us. How much stronger to be able to, to communicate that our love is deeper and broader than what this offense is, and in the context of the knowledge of that love, have the firmness to talk about consequences, to talk about what has happened, to apply consequences, serious consequences, harsh consequences if necessary, guided by love. Bringing them up in the discipline and the instruction that comes from the Lord. You see, strength isn't knocking people around. Strength is equipping people. Strength is giving of ourselves to lend strength to them, to equip them, to build them up, not to tear them down. You know, I like the translation that Susan read for us about the strength that God wants us to have. Can I read it again? Yeah. But before I do, there's, there's one other passage that comes in between in, in Ephesians 6, in between the fathers and children passage and being strong in the Lord and the armor of God passage. So probably that means they're not related to each other at all, wouldn't you imagine? Because there's a whole different subject in between. Does anyone know what that subject is? Slaves and masters. Now I understand this is not an endorsement for slavery as we've known it in this country and around the world. But let's just think even in terms of the one who has the power, the employer and the employee. And even in that setting, 
It communicates that strength is not by, by using the power that you have to just get what you want. But there's an accountability there for, for masters, for employers, as to how they use the strength that they have, how they use the power they have of their position, of their wealth, how they use that in relation to the people who have been put under their charge. Ephesians chapter 6, let me just read a couple of those principles because they apply to this whole question of what is strength. Certainly, the servants are called to obey their earthly masters. But then he says, and masters, treat your slaves in the same way. And he's talked about respect. Oh, what a big word that is. Do not threaten them since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven and there's no favoritism with him. So remember in how you treat your servants, your employees, that you are equally accountable to your master in heaven. That you have no more credit with God than your employee does. You're just as accountable for how you treat him or her as they are to you for how they perform their work. And then we come to this passage that talks about strength. And I know it, it may be kind of a summary to the whole letter in some ways, but, but even as a summary, it's saying understand what strength really is. Finally, build up your strength in union with the Lord and by means of his mighty power. Put on all the armor that God gives you so that you will be able to stand up against the devil's evil tricks. See, there is need for strength in this life. There is need for strength in following Christ. We are engaged in a battle. In a battle for the hearts of our children. In, the ba in a battle for the hearts of our families. In, in spiritual battles in this life. Even for our own hearts. Especially for our own hearts. Put on the armor that God gives you so that you will be able to stand up against the devil's evil tricks. For we are not fighting against human beings, but against wicked spiritual forces in the heavenly world. So put on God's armor now. Then when the evil day comes, you will be able to resist the enemy's attacks. And after, the fighting, after fighting to the end, you will still hold your ground. So stand ready with truth as a belt tied around your waist, with righteousness as your breastplate, and as your shoes, the readiness to announce the good news of peace. At all times, carry faith as a shield, for with it you will be able to put out all the burning arrows shot by the evil, evil one. And accept salvation as a helmet, and the word of God as a sword which the Spirit gives you. Do all this in prayer. Asking for God's help. Let me come back to that. To the dependence in all of this. The humility. The weakness in, in ourselves. Pray on every occasion as the spirit leads. For this reason keep alert and never give up. Pray always for all God's people. These are pictures of strength. God told Joshua in our reading, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Why? For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now Joshua was not a perfect father. But we get a glimpse of where his heart was, where he was aiming. When later, in the end of the book of Joshua, many years later, toward the end of his time leading the people of Israel where he gathered the nation before him and he said, so fear the Lord and serve him wholeheartedly. Serve the Lord alone. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then you choose today which way you're going to go. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's strength. That's leadership. That's clarity of who he is, of where he's come from, of why he is there. 
You know, we've touched on it a little bit, but there are a whole lot of things as we look in the news around us, we can see so many examples, some of good examples, but a lot of examples of, of misguided strength. And those of you who have walked with me here in this congregation, in this faith community for these past 20 plus years, know that I've been very reluctant to make political statements. Boy, that has your attention, doesn't it? And I'm not going to make one this morning. Other than there's a very prominent political candidate out there who um, you may agree with his policies, and I'm not disputing policies per se. But I just want to remind you, because this is such a prominent example out there, that, that strength is not bullying in your demeanor. Strength is not belittling other people. Oh, it might look like strength and bravado and that's not godly strength. I'm not telling you how to vote. There are a whole lot of other issues beside this, but just understand from a character perspective that talking big and putting other people down and racism and bigotry and and encouraging fighting and encouraging that type of, oh, it's a show of strength and it, it sells to some people pretty well. But that's not real strength. You say, but, but he gets things done. He speaks his mind. He doesn't care what other people think. And that's strength? I think Proverbs says something about a man who can hold his tongue is stronger than the one who takes a city. There's another man who was in the news recently, and understand, I'm not equating the two. I, I'm, I'm really not. It's a man in Orlando. who showed one form of expression of strength, perhaps, because he was equipped with a high-powered gun that was able, he had, what, 300 rounds or so, and before, before all had ended, 50 lives were taken, including his own, others wounded. Oh, there are some who would say, that's a show of strength, and I... No, it's not. Not to go into a building of unarmed people and to just start shooting. It sounds pretty cowardly to me. But even in the midst of that tragedy, there were, there were examples of light in the midst of that darkness. There were examples, examples of true strength, of character and compassion. Young man named Joshua McGill. After hearing gunshots, Joshua fled the club and hid behind a parked car where he saw a man limping around with three gunshot wounds. First, just he saw the two in his arms and he saw one in his back. The man turned out to be Rodney Sumter, Jr., a Pulse bartender. Well, Joshua was a nursing student, and he, he pulled Rodney into his hiding place and pulled off his own shirt and used Rodney's shirt and made a tourniquet and, to try to stop the bleeding and was telling him over and over, everything will be okay, I got you. And Rodney rode to the, to the hospital in a police car. He would later write about that incident and just how shaken he was by the whole thing. He said, there was a very tragic thing that happened tonight. Thoughts and prayers for everyone at Pulse or those who know anyone who was at Pulse. That's the name of the nightclub. It was very crazy and tra a traumatic experience. I'm very thankful I got away safe and a lot of other people I know and care about did as well. 
I hid under a car and found one of the victims that was shot. I tied my shirt and his shirt over his wounds to stop the bleeding and got him secretly to the nearest officer who then transported us to the ER. Words cannot and will not describe the feeling of that. Being covered in blood, trying to save a guy's life that I don't even know, regardless of that, I'm fine, just traumatized. The things I had to say to the guy and make promises I didn't know I would be able to keep or not, to keep him conscious while holding him as tight as I could and blood everywhere on me. At one point he said to this man, I don't know if you're religious or not, but I'll say a prayer with you. And he did. Later reports are that Rodney made it to surgery and survived. Strength is not only found in men, not by a long shot. Brenda Lee Marquez McCool, 49-year-old cancer survivor and mom to 11 kids, don't know the story, including Isaiah Henderson, with whom she visited Pulse that fateful, fateful night. When shots rang out, Brenda shouted, get down to Isaiah and shielded him. <coughs> Brenda was shot at least twice, and died protecting her son. That's how much she loved her kids, Brenda's sister-in-law told the New York Daily News. If it weren't for her, Isaiah would have been shot. Another individual, Christopher Hansen, after crawling out of Pulse, Christopher began helping victims. He used his bandana to stop one man from bleeding out and helped a female gunshot victim stay calm and control her breathing. I'm not going to leave these victims behind, he told CNN. Imran Yusuf, 24-year-old, had been a Pulse bouncer for only three weeks. As he reported, when the shooting started, everyone around him seemed frozen in terror, but this Marine veteran sprang into action. He, he somehow jumped over and threw a sea of people to unlatch a back door that led an estimated 60 to 70 people to safety. He said as soon as people found out the door was open, they just kept pouring out, he told CNN. I only wish I could have saved more. I think the message of events like that and circumstances like that, the message this morning of, of what is true strength is just a reminder that love is always stronger than hate, that light is always stronger than darkness. It may not look like it, but it is. That strength is not measured in what you can take, but in what you can give. Strength is in giving life, not tear, taking life. It's in building, not tearing down. It's in love, not hate. Ultimately, our source of strength and our example is in our Heavenly Father. I'm drawing a lot from other people this morning. I hope that's okay. Curry saw me reach and take a sheet of paper from the stand over there and kind of smiled, wondered what I was up to. We all sang together a song called Strong Tower. Let's think about those words again as we, as we draw to a close this morning. It talks about our Heavenly Father and the example he gives us of what strength is. Strong and mighty, strong to save us, like a fortress never failing, strong in battle, strong in kindness. When we stray, Lord, you're strong to find us. When the wind come, winds come hard against us, you are steadfast, you are true. When the ground beneath us trembles, your foundation never moves. Strong tower, high and glorious, strong tower, mighty in love. Our refuge, 
our defender, strong tower, Lord above. Strong to lead us through the shadows, strong to carry all our sorrows. Men, women too. We strong enough to take on the sorrows of other people, to carry them, to let them lean on us. That strength, not to place our burdens on them. I understand there's a time to share our burdens too. I, I, you get that. I'm not saying don't. Sometimes we need that reminder too, to, to be willing to let other, people's, other people help us. But that's a far cry from, from abusing our strength to, to require it of others. When the enemy surrounds us, closing in as darkness fall, falls, though his armies rage against us, they can never scale these walls. Strong tower, high and glorious. Strong tower, mighty in love. Our refuge, our defender. Strong tower, Lord above. Our ultimate source of strength. Knowing where we've come from, who we are, and what our purpose is. To find all three answers in our Heavenly Father. Who created us. We are loved by Him. We are here to be channels of his love to the world around us. May God grant us the grace, the mercy, to live out that strength in our families and in the world around us.